In this video, we're going to be putting all the concepts together of completing the square when given a quadratic function to put it in general form, and then from general form, identify the vertex, axis, symmetry, graph it, and then do left point and right point. So let's start. I'm given f of x equals negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 5. Remember, if you're going to complete the square to get it in general form, you need to get the quadratic and linear term isolated. So I'm going to add 5 to the other side, and I'm going to change the f of x to y. So we have y plus 5 equals negative 2x squared plus 8x. Remember, you cannot complete the square with the leading coefficient. That's not 1. So I'm going to have to factor in order to create the coefficient of 1. And I'm making a note of that because, remember, that affects our c value. So I'm going to have y plus 5. You factor out the negative 2. You get x squared minus 4x. Now that I have a lean coefficient 1, I can complete the square. So y plus 5 plus our placeholder equals negative 2 times x squared minus 4x plus our placeholder. And what we do is we take half of our b value, so half of 4 is negative 2, square that, and we get a positive 4. So positive 4 goes here to create a perfect square trinomial. However, on the left side, we need to take into account that we're not actually adding 4 on the right side. We're taking negative 2 times 4 if we were to distribute. We're really subtracting 8. And so negative 8 has to go on this side. And so we have y minus 3 when we combine like terms on the left, negative 2 times the quantity x, and we squared a negative 2, so x minus 2. To finish off general form, y needs to be by itself, so y equals negative 2 times x minus 2 squared plus 3. And this is our general form. So let's take a look. Let's identify A, H, and K from this information. So A is going to be negative 2. H is a positive 2. And K is 3. That allows us to find and state our vertex and axis of symmetry. Our vertex is the coordinate H, K. So our vertex is the coordinate 2, 3. Our axis of symmetry is x equals h, so x equals 2. So on my graph, I can plot the point 2, 3 for my vertex, use a dashed vertical line going through 2, because our x symmetry is x equals 2. Again, we can change the color to make it stand out between what we're going to be graphing. And so now we have our vertex, our axis symmetry, we need to now apply the concept of finding either a left point or a right point. To the left of 2 is 1, and to the right of 2 is 3. If I take a look, I plug in a 1. I'll get 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So I'm, I've been doing right points for a while. I want to show you left points work as well. So I have negative 2 times 1 minus 2 squared plus 3. So you get negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3. Negative 1 squared is 1. So negative 2 times 1 plus 3 is negative 2 plus 3, which is positive 1. So your left point is the coordinate 1, 1. So I go up to my graph. I plot the coordinate 1, 1. Use reflection, it's one unit away from the axis of symmetry, so go one unit in the other direction. And there's the right point. And now we connect with our parabola. We know it's a negative 2 for A, so it's opening downwards, and you notice it's opening downwards pretty fast. It's stretched vertically as well because of the size of A, and so it's decreasing faster and faster and faster. So look what we just did. We started with our function. And from our function, we completed the square to get it in our general form. 
and from our, from our general form, we found our vertex and our axis of symmetry, which allowed us to graph. And then we used either the left point or the right point to finish sketching the graph of the parabola. So this applies every single concept from the lesson together. So we'll look at one last example of this, putting everything at one point in the problem. So we have 3x squared plus 12x plus 5. Isolate the quadratic and linear term by subtracting 5. And so I have y minus 5 equals 3x squared plus 12x. I can't complete the square as is. I'm going to have to factor. So I like to make a note that I factor. And the reason why is because it allows me to remember when I complete the square, I have to take that into account. So I'm going to factor out the 3. And now I can complete the square. So y minus 5 plus my placeholder equals 3 times x squared plus 4x and put in my placeholder. We take half of our b value, so half of 4, which is 2, and square it, we get positive 4. So positive 4 goes on the right side. However, we need to take in consideration the fact that we factored when figuring out what goes on the left side, because we're not really adding 4. If you were to distribute, you're really adding 12. And so I have to add 12 on the other side as well. And so I have here negative 5 plus 12 is 7. So I have y plus 7 equals 3 times the quantity x plus 2 squared, because I squared a positive 2. Solve y equals 3 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 7. And we can just finish up from here. This is our general form. We've already graphed three examples, we've gone through it, so I'm just gonna use the rest of the video and identify all of my parts. So let's identify our A, H, and K value. So A is three, H is negative two, and K is negative seven. So that allows me to help find my vertex because my vertex is the coordinate H, K. So negative two, negative seven. My axis of symmetry is x equals h, so x equals negative 2. And so this identifies my vertex and my axis of symmetry. To find another point, you would either use your left point, which to the left of negative 2 is negative 3, or you would use your right point, which to the right of negative 2 is negative 1. And then you just plug it in. So I would do 3 times x plus 2, which x is negative 3. So 3 times negative 3 plus 2 squared minus 7, which is 3 times negative 1 squared minus 7. So negative 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 minus 7 is negative 4. So my left point is the coordinate negative 3, negative 4. Remember, the right point is going to be symmetrical. So the right point will have the same y values, negative 1, negative 4. So now you would have all the pieces of information necessary to graph from it. And all of it stems from getting your function in general form by completing the square. Identifying A, H, and K for your vertex, your axis symmetry. Use the axis symmetry to assist in finding a point to the left and a point to the right. Plug in for order of operations and get those to graph. So I hope you found this video helpful, which applies all the concepts in this lesson together. If you need any extra assistance with this, just go back through the other videos to develop your understanding.